Yeah, I mean, really cool. I mean, we all grew up watching the World Series and doing all that. So yeah, just to even be here is you know a pretty cool thing, and to be a small part of history is you know again pretty special, I guess, for sure. Please. Special indeed. Alec Phillies third baseman Alec Bohm hit the 1,000th home run in World Series history last night to help his club beat the Astros in big board sports. Winners of two in a row. The Spurs will put their streak on the line tonight when they host the Toronto Raptors. The Spurs will be shorthanded in this one because Keldon Johnson, Isaiah Roby, Devin Vassell, and Blake Wesley are all out with various injuries. But Jeremy Sohan, he is available. At 5-2, and two, the Spurs are off to a surprising start. And this morning, following shoot-around, Josh Richardson explained why. We don't really play just through, like, one guy. Like, we don't have, like, a superstar. Everybody's very unselfish. We play with a lot of pace. Um, I mean, it's tough to guard when, when everybody can really, you know, be a threat. So when you got a team like that, I think it's always dangerous. Spurs rookie guard Blake Wesley is out for the next six, eight weeks because the first round pick has suffered a grade three sprain of the medial collateral ligament of his left knee. The injury occurred during the second quarter of Sunday night's 107-98 victory against the Minnesota Timberwolves. A grade three sprain is actually a tear that can take up to two months to heal. So here's the matchup. Spurs will host the Raptors tonight at seven at the AT&T Center. Now the Raptors last played on Halloween night when they beat the Hawks 139-109. to They outscored the Hawks 44-29 in the fourth quarter to blow the game open. Pascal Siakam is their leading scorer, 26.1 points per game this season, and Gary Trent Jr. is next at 19.4 points per contest. Take you to Philadelphia for Game 3 of the World Series, where the Phillies dominated the Houston Astros last night. Bottom of the first, Bryce Harper rips a 402-foot shot off of Lance McCullers Jr. Two-run job, and it's 2-0 Phillies. Then in the second inning, the home runs continue to fly. First, Alex Bohm, who smacked the 1,000th home run in World Series history, goes yard. The first homer was hit in 1903 in World Series history. Later in the inning, Brandon Marsh goes yard, and it's 4-0 Philadelphia. The Phillies tied a World Series mark and five homers as they shut out the Astros seven to nothing, taking a 2-1 series lead. You know, we got beat pretty bad and I got beat up pretty bad. So, you know, I obviously wanted to pitch well and, and pitch much better than, than I did. But at the end of the day, you know, all I can do at this point is, is get ready to go for a potential game seven. It was kind of mind boggling because, you know, he didn't give up homers. You know, usually he keeps the ball in the ballpark. And, uh, you know, he wasn't satisfied with it. Uh, you know, we were very surprised by it. Game four is tonight at 7.03, followed by game five tomorrow night in Philly at the same time. All right, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Who's winning it all? <laughs> it's I think it's too early to pick. Okay. The Astros should not have a tough time coming back tonight because when you get blown out, it's easy. Motivation. When you lose by one, I think it's a little more tough. I think it still goes six to seven games. Okay. Yeah. All right. You coming back at 1230? I'm back. Right. Yes. Just then. don't ask me no tough questions. <laughs> Just Thanks, say Larry. go Astros. That was the answer. New today at five, the cost of dental procedures can lead on the expensive side, which is why it is best to consider all of your options. We'll break down the benefits of a second option and when is the best time to do it. It's today at five after entertainment tonight. An RSV vaccine for older adults now in the works, and this could change things. It's the first time it's been tried. For most people, RSV causes cold-like symptoms, but then it can cause severe illness in older adults and young children. Now the pharmaceutical company GSK announcing that the FDA accepted its application for an RSV vaccine for seniors. The FDA agreed to give the vaccine an expedited review and says it'll announce a decision by early May. Also this week, Pfizer announcing positive results in a recent study of its own RSV vaccine for babies. CVS, Walgreens and Walmart have tentatively agreed to pay at least $12 billion to settle opioid lawsuits. According to Bloomberg, the lawsuits were brought by state and local governments. They allege the retailers mishandled prescriptions of opioid painkillers. More than 3,000 lawsuits have been filed against pharmacies, opioid manufacturers and distributors accusing them of downplaying the addiction risks of opioids and also failing to stop the pills from being used illegally. 
Data shows the opioid crisis has claimed more than a half a million lives over the past two decades, 80 percent or rather 80,000 of them in 2021 alone. Well, none of the latest in the Federal Reserve. The Fed is expected to raise interest rates yet again later today, and that raise is expected by three quarters of a percentage point. That's right. So this would be the fourth straight rate hike of that amount that we've seen in just the last year. Now, this decision comes as inflation levels continue to plague the United States economy. Now, here's the thing. It pushes the cost to borrow money up even further, and that means mortgage rates. They're going to get hit to an almost 20-year high. The inflation is triggering a concern of a possible recession. Now, the Fed Chair Jerome Powell acknowledging these concerns, but also saying that persistent inflation, well, if it's left unchartered, that inflation could bring greater economic injury than a recession. And the Fed, not done yet, it's likely to enact another half percentage point hike in December. We're going to take a live look outside with live cam. Ooh, so nice out there, and the sun is out too. Look at that, Justin. It is beautiful out there, under 70 degrees. Is this going to last? Uh, the sun will probably be shrouded out next couple of days with some more cloud covers. So I don't know that we'll see the blue skies like this next few days, but boy, it, it is nice today. We've had a pretty good week here as far as temperatures go. 68 degrees right now here at noon. Weather headlines. Here's what we have to look forward to. We'll continue to see some off and on clouds today. And then as we get into the next couple of days, we'll be looking at drizzle and fog, especially in the mornings and then plenty of cloud cover during the afternoon and Friday. There is a small window for storms, so we're not looking for much rain out of this. It's uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, we could add to our rainfall total for the year, but I don't think it's going to going to be much. Uh, and, and we were hoping for much better outcome there. 69 degrees right now. Dew point is at 59. Northeasterly winds at about seven miles per hour. And as we look at the live radar, there are a couple of very, very light showers as you get down closer to the coast. Places like Kennedy, Victoria, Beville. That's where we could see a sprinkle or two this afternoon. Again, it's not going to be much more than that. And here in San Antonio, we're not seeing any returns on the radar. There's a satellite picture. So you see the breaks here around San Antonio. And that's why the sun is out. Breaks around Pleasanton, Hondo, into the hill country. But clouds still holding. Eagle Pass, Del Rio. And then you get south into Bevo and Victoria. Still cloudy there. 73 in Pleasanton with the sun popping out. 70 in Hondo. 63 Kerrville. Close to 70 here in San Antonio. And uh, 67 at Randolph. 67 over there in Seguin. Rain chances, 20% chance going into tomorrow, tomorrow night and Friday, but we bring it up to a 40% shot Friday night as that front comes through. And we'll talk more about the timing on that, how it may interrupt Friday night football too. That's coming up here in just a bit, guys. Thank you so much. Black Friday deals seem to be rolling out a lot earlier than ever. And spotting a good sale can be tricky because there's so many of them out there. How to make sure you're getting the best prices. And the UIL volleyball playoffs are now underway. The first night seeing a lot of great matchups. Larry's going to join us again. He's going to have later in sports. Now to holiday travel. It's just about to start. And pilots at two of the biggest airlines are threatening, though, to walk off the job. It's not the only issue that could affect your holiday travel plans. We'll explain. United Airlines says it anticipates the demand for mechanics and other technicians going to be really high. In fact, it's planning to hire 7,000 technicians in the coming years. That's why it has started a new apprenticeship program. It is called Calibrate. United currently has about 9,000 mechanics and technicians, but it has announced major plans to expand its aircraft fleet and says requirements are going to impact its ranks. United said trainees will be employed and paid during the program. And it is not just technician positions that airlines are worrying about keeping staff. They also need pilots. United Pilots announcing they'll soon start picketing. And at Delta, nearly all of them voting to authorize a strike. Now, pilots say they're frustrated with their pay and benefits as they put in long hours and they're working record overtime. We are uh, continuing to uh, work longer days. We're spending more time away from our family. And the ball is in the company's court. Delta says the company is confident they're going to reach an agreement with the pilots and holiday travel will not be affected. Meanwhile, United Pilots overnight rejecting a tentative agreement. 
Uh, that could mean big problems for the airline. Experts say this could be the biggest holiday travel rush since the pandemic, possibly even surpassing pre-pandemic levels. Some airlines already cutting flights from the schedule to have extra crew and planes on hand just in case. A lot of major retailers already kicking off holiday sales and with each store touting major markdowns, it can be hard to know if you're actually getting the good deal. ABC's Becky Worley explains how to approach this holiday shopping season and these early sales. Where can you go for the latest must-haves? Halloween is barely in the rearview mirror, but the holiday sales barrage has already begun. Early holiday deals at Amazon. We're really seeing things start earlier than ever before. Amazon, Walmart, and Target starting major sales campaigns in October. And now from Best Buy, their Black Friday deals right now, promoting the Roku streaming stick at $24, while it normally retails around $50. Or the Black Friday preview from Land's End, with these cashmere line tech gloves up to 60% off. Target is rolling out its deals of the day in an effort to get shoppers' attention, too. Today, 25% off any one toy. And Amazon has a myriad of discounts like these electric toothbrushes, over 25% off. And some beauty items like this hair straight iron that's 55% off. But experts say don't assume the lowest prices are here now. The first and most important thing to remember is that not every sale is, is going to be a good one. There are a lot of sales out there that are framed as being great discounts that are not, in fact, fantastic. But there are some strategies to find the rock bottom price. Set a price drop alert using shopping apps like Honey or Camel 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 to tell you when prices go down. Those same sites can show you historical pricing data, which may give you an idea of how much lower the price could go on Black Friday. And know that the days around Black Friday will probably still net the best prices on electronics. But if you do buy now, ask if the store has a price protection policy. And what those allow you to do is if you purchase an item and the price falls uh, within a certain window, it allows you to go back to them and be refunded the difference. And that was ABC's Ms. Hurley reporting, taking a live look out there. Look at that. The clouds are dissipating. It's turned out to be a gorgeous Wednesday afternoon. Really pretty. And this is kind of like the weather we're going to get over the weekend, too. Yeah, the weekend uh, probably will be, we'll see even more blue skies. I mean, because everything clears out Friday night with our front. So and the weekend looks good, other than it will be a little bit windy Saturday morning. So far today, 69 the high, 58 the low. The record is 88 uh, back in 1936. So it can get pretty warm this time of year. That's not in the cards. We do have some 80s in the forecast, but not that warm. And as I mentioned, a pretty good looking weekend too. A look at that forecast, it's coming up. Well, welcome back and happy Wednesday. It got so much happier when we looked outside. It was gorgeous out there. I know, I, you know, and I gotta say, it's so good to be home because Florida, <laughs> man, it, they're still in summer over there. Well, sure, yeah, a little sticky. Very. Um, it does. It feels great outside. I mean, there's just not a lot to complain about with this kind of weather. It does get a little more humid next couple of days. I'll, I'll caution you there. We've got to talk about the tropics again. We have a hurricane now on our hands down in the Caribbean, and this is bearing down on Belize. It'll be making landfall here pretty soon. Winds are at 80 miles per hour. It's gusting to 100. And this is moving west at 14 miles per hour. So as you might imagine, this is causing some issues there along the coast of Belize and really all the way up to Cancun. So folks th that are there on vacation uh, seeing some issues as well. Now this will move inland pretty quickly, uh, producing heavy rain as it does for parts of Guatemala and Mexico. And then it turns into the Gulf of Mexico. And normally we'd say, hey, we got to watch out for this. But with fronts coming through and systems coming through, really deflects it down to the south. I will tell you, at least a little bit of this moisture gets pulled north with this next system. Doesn't really give us extra rainfall here, but it does pull a little bit of moisture into that system as it moves across the country. Uh, names. Uh, by the way, this is Lisa. Martin was named out in the Atlantic, too. It was more of a subtropical type storm, but that name is now off the list. So the next name storm, if we get it, would be Nicole. We're nearing the end of hurricane season. It uh, technically ends at the end of the month. There's the scene outside the blue skies we were talking about. It is nice. Temperatures uh, sitting at 69 at the airport, 71 stints and up to 70 at Kelly and Randolph. And we're looking at a light easterly wind. The cloud cover has been fairly thick through most of the morning, but it's cleared out just recently here over Bear County. Still a patch of clouds up there around 
uh, Canyon Lake area and the parts of Kindle County. And then you've got some thicker clouds out near Uvalde, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Pleasanton. You just broke out into some sun, although there are clouds just to your south. And it really, it's going to be kind of off and on cloud cover today. And so that'll have a big, uh, the temperatures will be very dependent on that. 67 in New Braunfels, 65 Kerrville, 70 in Hondo. But where we are seeing more sun, places like Pleasanton, it's up to 76. And looking at the forecast temperatures, we should make it up into the mid-70s today. Uh, we're thinking 76 here in San Antonio. Uh, maybe a little bit cooler in the Hill Country. Kerrville 74, 75, San Marcos 75 in Forestville. And the dew point trend. But we don't see maps like this too often. Uh, so what is happening here is we've got some fairly good humidity next couple of days, which will lead to some drizzle and fog and our rain chances on Friday. But after our front passes, the dew point just bottoms out on Saturday. It gets really dry. But watch how quickly moisture returns by Sunday afternoon. We've got dew points back in the 60s and then we've got a rain chance on Monday. So it literally is just one day with some dry air behind our front. You can see the clouds here across South Texas and that is some of the moisture returning out ahead of our next storm system, which on water vapor, you see the counterclockwise spin there sitting across parts of Oregon right now, but it moves down in our direction. And as we look at the future cast here, as we start to pull in some of that moisture, some chances of fog, a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning, and even a shower or two during the afternoon, we'll see that repeat on Friday morning. And then here comes the front. With the front, we're going to put in a 40% chance of rain, but notice at 5 o'clock, there's really not much there. It's not until the evening hours that we see showers and storms sort of erupt along the front. And the big question will be, where does that happen? If it happens just east of San Antonio, we miss out on the rain altogether. But if we do see storms form over the city, a couple of them could be strong, and then they'll very quickly move east by 10 o'clock and then out of here by midnight and by Saturday morning, everything will have cleared out. So here's what the plan for. As we said earlier, a thin line of evening storms here in San Antonio, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. And this is on Friday. Not much rain out of it. Uh, there is a small window of severe weather and it could affect Friday night football. But if we see any delays, I think they'll be brief. So that's what we're watching for on Friday. Otherwise, it clears out this weekend. 77 on Saturday, 81 Sunday. A 20% chance rain as that moisture comes back with some showers on Monday. All right, your turn, Justin. Who's uh -oh. going to win it? Well, it's, I'm going with the Strohs. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Six I'm games. with Mattress Mac. See how easy that is? Mattress Mac. <laughs> so Justin easy. also has $10 million no, on the no. Astros. No, uh, well, you know, he's a big baller like that. Yeah, yeah I know. See, he's a big deal. Yeah, you've got deep pockets over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not even close. Hey, thank you. Thank you, I Justin. can't even imagine Justin placing a bet on anything. <laughs> I think he might have bet on the Spurs this year, though. Uh, yeah, hey, he's, he's pumped yeah. up about the Spurs. Yeah. That is for sure. So the Spurs, speaking of them, what is that second unit going to look like now since Blake Wesley is out several weeks with a left MCL sprain? And in high school volleyball, the playoffs still faced Brandeis last night. Coming up. Uh, I can't tell you now because we play them tonight, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you know, we just move and uh, execute our game plan and then we can talk about it tomorrow. Okay. Naturally, Josh Richardson can't talk about the Spurs game plan for the Raptors on game day. The Spurs held morning shoot around ahead of their home game tonight with the Toronto Raptors. Rookie Jeremy Sohan was upgraded to available after dealing with flu-like symptoms, but Keldon Johnson is out with right calf tightness. Isaiah Roby is out with flu-like symptoms. Devin Vizell remains out with left knee soreness, and Blake Wesley is out several weeks with a left MCL sprain. So with Wesley out, how would that second unit look in terms of who will handle the ball? I mean, it'll probably be me a lot of the time. Um, and I'm kind of used to that. I played point guard a lot early in my career, but uh, you know, it's kind of by committee now. Yeah. So uh, I know Toronto pressures, I know there's teams that pressure a lot. So, uh, you know, it'll be a work in progress really once we start. Here's the matchup. The five and two Spurs will host the four and three Raptors tonight at seven. The UIL volleyball playoffs are underway and a number of local teams advanced to the next round last night. One of the marquee matchups featured the defending Class 6A state champion Brandeis Broncos taking on Steel. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley was there and he has more. 
With the match tied at one set apiece and trailing early in the third, Brandeis showed their championship pedigree and put together an impressive run as the Broncos rallied to defeat Steele three sets to one and punched their tickets to the Class 6A second round. We just really wanted it because we, we put so much work in the gym and we just really wanted to show that we could do it. So I think there was just like a turning point that we know we can do it, so we just have to put it on the court. We knew that we needed to make less errors and be more consistent, and we did that, and it really showed, especially in the last two sets. The Broncos may be defending champs, but this is a very different unit from the one that won it all last year. So current seniors like Emma Halstead are keeping the team level-headed. We're not going to look too far ahead. We're going to keep moving and we're going to keep pushing because each new challenge could, and for anybody in playoffs, the next challenge could be your last. So we're going to push one at a time and keep going. Meanwhile, MacArthur is celebrating their first playoff win since 2010. The Bramas moved down to Class 5A this season, and they swept Medina Valley in the first round. It feels good just coming back and showing what Matt can really do. It really just shows how much our team can come together and really push through a tough match and ultimately come out with a win. You can catch full highlights from both of these matches, as well as Burbank versus Harlandale and Highlands versus Southwest, right now on the BGC page at KSAT.com. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Oh, MacArthur Volleyball having some fun yeah. there. Thank you very much, Andrew. That is awesome. Larry, thank you so much. Yep. Everyone having fun today, especially those on SA Live. Always. Hey, yep. Mike. How are you doing? Yeah, we're having, we've got a great show for you. Of course, today is actually Dia de los Muertos. And Victor Carrizales, who is one of the managers at Mi Tierra, is here. And we're going to be talking about everything they have over there, including uh, a very special altar. And you said there's three different types of altars, right? Yes, Mike. We have uh, two, three, and seven levels. Okay. So we'll talk they, about later. And they, they mean different things. And which is the most common? The most common is the seven uh, levels, which is a very traditional one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about decorating uh, some of the uh, sugar stalls and some of the events, of course, coming up at Mi Tierra. All right. Hey, there is a new soda shop in town, and Jen is there. It's soda with a Texas twist. We'll tell you why you want to come check out the menu here at Drank Soda Shop. Hey, want to have a slumber party every day in your house? We're going to tell you where you can get a hold of one of these. Just think, chicka chicka bling bling. Our dear friend Jada Rashan is here, and she has some wonderful, wonderful fall crafts. Always great stuff to do with the kids. Also, a local chef who once cooked for former President George H.W. Bush has some uh, great recipes for fall. Three different recipes, as a matter of fact. Okay, so Halloween's over. We have Thanksgiving coming up, but the big question is, when do you start putting up your Christmas decorations? Of course, Christmas has been in a lot of big stores since, what, July almost, it seems like. But when are you going to put up all the lights and wreaths? The answer is your answers coming up. That and a whole lot more on SA Live, so stick around. Now that the sun's out, temperatures are up to 71 here in San Antonio, 76 this afternoon. A lot of clouds the next couple days, chance of storms late Friday night. Small window there for some rain and maybe a couple strong storms and then it clears out for the weekend so the weekend all in all looks really nice yes it does and we get to set our clocks back yes we get an extra hour of sleep that is fantastic loving just, that justin horn you brought us the great weather you brought us an hour of sleep thank you so much and thank you for watching that is it here for the news at noon we're going to go over to sa live right now celebrate san antonio coming to you live from historic market square this is SA Live. Hello and happy Wednesday. Yes, of course, today is Dia de los Muertos. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Ostrage. Fiona is off today. Well, of course, Halloween is over. We're getting past Dia de los Muertos. Thanksgiving, of course, is just a couple of weeks away, but a lot of folks are already starting to think about Christmas right now, and some folks may already be putting up their Christmas decorations, be it the tree inside or some of the decorations you're doing pretty good over there, Ted. You need a little more red on the, the side. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. We'll work on that throughout the show, okay? 
Okay, very good. Uh, but some folks are already putting up their, uh, their Christmas decorations. So the big question is, when do you put up your Christmas decorations? A lot of folks are very traditional, not until after Thanksgiving. I mean, a lot of stuff has been in the stores already and you can drive around and see a lot of different uh, Christmas decorations and lights already going up. So that big question, when do you put yours up? Send us the answer and hopefully we'll see some of your answers a little bit later on in the show. Well, of course, Dia de los Muertos celebrations continue here in San Antonio and La Familia Cortez is going all out as they usually do right here at Market Square. And Victor Carrizales, who is a manager at Meteor, is here. Good afternoon. Good to see you, sir. Good okay, you, so Mike. a lot of people think that November 1st is actually Dia de los Muertos, but mm -hmm. it is today. Yesterday was for the little ones, right? Uh -huh. Correct. That, that, uh, yesterday was for the Dia de los Angelitos, mm -hmm. and today we're celebrating the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Death. Okay. And, of course, the altars are a, a huge part of it. And Correct. we were talking about sugar skulls. What's the significance of the sugar skulls? So the sugar the skulls is actually, if you don't have any picture of the loved one, you can actually place one of the skulls and uh, that represents the uh, person that you would like to put in the altar. Okay, and as far as decorating the skulls, that's just anything that you want to do. And Maybe you, the, how would you like colors. to decorate your skull? Okay, mm -hmm. some of the basic items uh, that need to go on an altar, what are they? And you have some Correct, of them here. we have some elements right here. Mm -hmm. And let me start with the flower of Asempasuchil. This flower is very popular because it helps uh, the, the spirit to bring it to the altar. It's an aromatic, it's very rich in uh, aroma. And then we, uh, we have the calaveritas. And if you can see, Mike, uh, there, it's painted uh, with color mm -hmm. because the Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, it's about life, it's, celebra it's uh, celebrating the death. It's, it, not a, it's not a mourning period, right? Correct, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's not like that. So that's why we have these colorful uh, calaveritas. And then right here we have the candles. The candles is to light up the path. Mm -hmm. So they can spirit come to the altar. It's uh, something similar to the flower, but it likes of the path as well. And, and you had said that there are three different types of altars. I never had heard this before. Yes, yes. We have three types of altars. The two, three, and seven levels. The two levels represent the heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. The three, it represents heaven, the purgatory, and the underworld. And the very traditional one is the seven levels. That means when uh, the spirit needs to, like the process to go to heaven, all the steps uh, it needs to be done before it goes to heaven. But then you said also kind of a double meaning because sometimes it could be even the seven yeah, deadly the, the, sins. Uh, correct, uh -huh. for some people can mean the, the seven deadly death, uh, sins. All right, so these are the basic things that, that go on an altar and then it could be the, the individual items that, that somebody always likes. Correct. The, the different food, maybe um, item, jewelry items that they had, right? Correct, so let's go over with the, uh, with the food. Once the, the, the person is placed um, of the loved one, you're gonna place their favorite food, either uh, enchiladas, one typic one is the mole. You can place it on the altar. And then we have the pan de dulce, which is very popular. And then also the significance of the, what is it, the bones? Yes, plastic, uh, the, right? the bones, the, 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 if you can see the bread, the, the form that it has is the, actually the bones, of the calaveritas. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, a very special altar, is set up in Mi Tierra right now. Correct. For there was the the tragedy this summer back in uh, late June Correct. with the migrants coming in. Fifty three unfortunately uh, died, and you have an altar set up to them. Right? Correct. So uh, as you know, Mi Tierra is very known for its festive uh, decor, all the culture, the piñatas, and the altars. And the Bora Cortez and the team build this uh, altar. Uh, for today is honoring the 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 people that pass on near. Uh, uh, at the Lachlan, uh, on the south side. Okay. Uh -huh. Why did Meteor decide to do that? Uh, because we are honoring the people that uh, risk their lives to, uh, to look for a better life. And so we like honoring them and placing them in the altar so that people can come and see what our people uh, risk their lives to, to look for a better life for their families. And uh, it's very, very unique, very creative. Uh, for Deborah Cortez. And so the whole community can celebrate their lives. Correct. Right? Uh -huh. Okay, and then how long is that, gonna, that altar going to be? Up? Until November 9th. All right. Uh -huh. All right, so we are getting now into November, of course, you know, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, New Year's, like everything's coming up at the blink of an eye. What other uh, events do you have coming up there? Uh, well, stay tuned because we have the tamalada coming up on December 10 and 11. Ooh. Uh -huh. Really? Yes. Your favorite tamales? My favorite tamale is pork. How many can you how eat in one sitting? Oof. 
let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you've been in competition with that before, uh -huh. right? And then also, if somebody does not want to cook at Thanksgiving, uh -huh. you are open. Yes, correct. Uh, we're open on Thanksgiving as well. All right. So you don't, if you don't want to cook something at home, you just want to have the food ready, you can come to mi tierra. Same with the tamala. Mm -hmm. if you don't want to make tamales at home, you can come to mi tierra and get your tamales. Okay. What are, what are the, all the different flavors that you uh, have? Por, uh, well, we have pork, mm -hmm. uh, chicken, refried. Yeah. You like refried beans? I don't like it all. Yeah. As long as somebody else is making, brings them to me. So uh -huh. I'll, I'll go with you in the pork. And if you don't want to cook Christmas dinner, you're open on Christmas as well, right? Yes, correct. Uh -huh. You're not going to tell us how many you've eaten in one sitting, huh? are you? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I'll get it out of him. You can find out more about La Familia Cortez Family Restaurants on their website, lafamiliacortez.com. Check out the pork tamales if Victor doesn't eat them all. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you very much, Victor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. All right. Well, there is a new soda shop in town, and it's all about San Antonio-inspired flavors. Jen Tobias Strusky popped. Who says pop? We do from the up north. Anyway, to check it out, it's over there in the Stone Oak area. <laughs> A refreshing twist on your basic beverage. We're at Drink Soda Shop where we're sampling their new menu, Texas inspired. And I'm joined now by Roman Huerta, the owner here. And I'm so excited, a soda shop. Wow, tell me, where did this idea come from? Yeah, so uh, I'm from Texas and I love Texas. But you know, life takes you different places. And I had the chance to live in Utah and enjoy the outdoors for eight years. And there I saw the rise of soda shops. And I came back here one November and it was 85 degrees and I said it would be really nice to have a drink. 85 and degrees in November, yeah, that's Texas, right? No, and it's snowing <laughs> in Utah. Yes. And so I said, you know what? Texas needs a soda shop. And so I'm like, I'm gonna bring it here. So a few months later we sold our house and then we moved down here. From there we got settled and started putting it together concept, testing more and more and building it to what it is today. I actually found the name early on, Drank. It's really fun to say and it just <laughs> is what it is, you know? And uh, I'm really excited to be back in my hometown and with the Texas twists on the soda shop. Here's how it works. You pick your base soda, then your fun San Antonio inspired flavor. They whip it up and you enjoy. Now That's what are we good. making today? Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and make these two today. The Seitan and the Chancla. And then I heard you've got a jalapeno popcorn. Ah, uh, uh, that is also true. So we also have our regular buttery popcorn, but we have jalapeno popcorn mm -hmm. and we use real butter. So it's real wonderful. Butter. All right, well we're gonna make that as well, right? Absolutely. Let's get started. Okay. Okay, so what are we making first? First thing we're gonna make is the Saint Town. And uh, well, first step, we'll just get some ice, okay. some of the good ice. Yes, you gotta have the good ice. Yeah, you gotta have good ice. It makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. All right, so next we're gonna come in and we'll add the cheesecake. Mm -hmm. And we'll add some of that puree, strawberry puree. Look Ooh. how, see it's thick, it has real yes. strawberries in there. And that, that stuff is killer. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more, just cause I love that. That looks right. so yeah. good. Oh, it's okay. Great. Yeah, feel free. And they're all customizable, so you can do it however you want. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll put some Dr. Pepper in it. Dr. Pepper, one of my favorites to go to. All right, so. stop there. Oh, oh, sorry. All right, now we'll <laughs> grab the spoon. Okay. All right, and mix it up. You gotta give that a good stir in. Make sure it's all mixed up in there because we wanna have a good, consistent, homogenous flavor and taste. All right, now let's uh, put some cream in there. Yep. Of course, uh, they do this for a living, so excuse my mess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll mix it a little bit more. Okay. I don't think I've ever had a soda like this. Just like with these extra things in it, I can smell it. You know, it smells good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we'll put some more, a little more Dr. Pepper to top it off. Okay. Mix again? Yeah, just a little bit more and then we'll get to go. All right, made with love, right? Here we go. Give it a try. Ooh, yeah. that's refreshing. I love the strawberry. Yes. So good. Yes, cheers to that. This is delicious. Now, is this one of the top sellers? Yes, this is like the number one seller so far. I can see why. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna hold on to this one. What are we making next? All right, so next we'll make La Chancla. Ooh, yes. The La Chancla includes pineapple, guava, and mango. Then you add Mountain Dew for the perfect mix. And if you do want to come sample a soda here at Drink Soda Shop, they have a drive through easy and convenient. Here you go. And if you want a kick in your popcorn, their signature jalapeno popcorn is made with butter, fresh jalapenos, and love. I got to help make one batch. 
Yum. They also sell Opal and Onyx cookies, another local favorite shop in the Hill Country. All righty, we got our river walk, and we have the Edwards Aquifer, and the Donkey Lady. I love the names. Y'all enjoy. Thanks, Rowan. As you can see, the names all tied to San Antonio Soda with the Texas Twist. For more information, you can head over to salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab. By the way, the Riverwalk has lavender in it, so I think he knows me well. All right, ladies, we have our beautiful interns joining us to taste test. Cheers! Jen, Sarah, and Lily, Three Musketeers there. Don't forget, the grand opening is this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. They'll have free soda, or pop if you want to call it, uh, cookies, and there's going to be music and food trucks as well. For more information on Drink Soda Sita, head over to salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, so the head on SA Live needs some new ideas for comfort dishes as cooler weather moves in. A Texas chef who once worked for a former president shares some great recipes. Plus, we are giving away cold, hard cash for the holidays. It's a big brand new giveaway. See how you could be the next big winner. But first, looking for fun ways to celebrate upcoming birthdays, how you can transform your home into a fabulous sleepover party. That's next on SA Live.